Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. I wanted to start off by sharing with you a really remarkable narration that tells us about what exactly is Laylatul Qadr and what transpires, what happens on the night of power. Sirat al-Muntaha is of course the highest spot in the heavens before entering into the realm of the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the angels they gather over there, they are the angels that are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are all engaged in the praise and the glorification, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and standing in the middle of them in the position of a leader and a coordinator is none other than Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel Gabriel. When the night of Laylatul Qadr happens, Jibreel alayhi salam descends down from that place of Sidratul Muntaha through the seven heavens, through the sama of the dunya, which means the sky of this world, and he descends down upon the earth. And along with him, then all the angels, they start coming down in waves upon waves upon waves, again, assembling around Jibreel alayhi salam. So much so that the narrations mention that there are more angels than the entire number of pebbles or rocks on the face of this earth. So the narrations mention that once they descend down from there, Jibreel alayhi salam starts to send them out from there. He begins to deploy the angels. Remember, Jibreel alayhi salam is the leader, is the, the, the general, the imam of the angels. So he starts deploying them out from there. And they start spreading out into the uh, all across the earth. And Jibreel alayhi salam gives the angels instructions. He tells them, go to every single home on the face of this earth where there is someone worshiping and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they begin to enter into every home and the narration mentions the only places that the angels avoid are places where there might be idols, places where there might be filth or something impure or unclean. Specifically, the narrations mention they enter into every single place except for a place that might have an intoxicant. The angels go into every single home where there is somebody praising, glorifying and worshiping Allah subhanahu and Jibreel salam specifically tells them to do a couple of things. He says, when you go there and you find people making dua, say Ameen to their duas. So the angels go around spreading throughout the earth looking for people making dua and they say Ameen to every single dua that every single person is making on that night. Jibreel salam tells them, look for people that are praying and worshiping tonight and go there and make dua for them. Make dua that Allah forgives them. Make dua that Allah blesses them. Make dua that Allah sends peace and tranquility upon them. And they go around looking for homes and people and individuals and masajid where people are praying and worshiping and they go there and they make dua. Oh Allah forgive these people, have mercy for these people. Send your peace and tranquility and your blessings upon these people. And specifically one particular narration, very beautifully, it mentions that Jibreel alayhi salam tells the angels that go and look for people that are worshiping and praying and go and shake their hands. Go and give them salams. Imagine the angels coming and saying salam to you and embracing you and shaking your hand and hugging you and making dua for you and saying ameen to your duas. That is what happens on the night of Laylatul Qadr. So this is going on all night long. And the angels are just moving about the earth, embracing the people, saying salam to the people, making dua for the people, saying ameen with the people that are worshiping on that blessed night. Until all the angels, when the morning time comes near, then all the angels, they gather back. When the time of Fajr comes in, all the angels gather back to Jibreel alayhi salam and he reassembles all the angels and the malaika and from there Jibreel alayhi salam, the narration mentions at the time of Fajr, he ascends up into the sky but he doesn't leave this dunya. He ascends up into the sky and he suspends himself in between the sky and the earth, basically where the sun is, where we, from where we see the sun. He ascends and suspends himself. He hangs in the air between the sky and the earth. And all the angels gather up and they start to ascend up into the sky and they gather around him. And what happens is that they stay there until the sun rises. 
And there's two things that happen at this time. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, you know when we talk about when we're allowed to worship and when we're not allowed to worship, the Prophet ﷺ told us, do not worship while the sun is rising. So we're not supposed to pray at the time while the sun is rising. We pray Fajr before that, and once the sun has fully risen, then we pray the Shuruq prayer, the Ishraq prayer after that. But while the sun is actually rising, we don't pray at that time. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that Shaytan goes and allies himself with the horizon on the east where the sun rises, that the sun rises between the horns of Shaytan. And Shaytan allies himself there so that the people that worship the sun, they worship at that time so they are actually worshipping shaitan. But the Prophet ﷺ says that morning, shaitan is not allowed to go and align himself from where the sun is rising. He is not allowed to go and stand there. And so the sun rises, the only time throughout the year where he rises without shaitan trying to position himself at that place. And then when the sun rises, it doesn't have sharp rays shooting out of it, but it just has like this general glow. The Prophet ﷺ says, he says that it's almost like it's a, like a plate or a dish, it's completely completely round, it just has a round haze or glow around it and it doesn't have rays shooting out of it. And the explanation in the narration is that the angels aligning themselves, Jibreel Ali some of the angels aligning themselves in the sky are basically shielding the rays of the sun. So when we are looking at the sun, we are looking at it through an angelic filter. And then Jibreel Ali Salam and the angels, and this part gets really amazing. So after all of this happens, the sun rises and everything is there. Now Jibreel alayhi salam and the angels, they go up into the sky. And they go into the sky of this world. So the angels are there in the sky and they see this army of angels, the closest angels to Allah, under the guidance and the leadership of Jibreel alayhi salam, they see them coming up. And so when they see them there, they ask them, how was the night of power? How was Laylatul Qadr? And Jibreel alayhi salam and the angels tell them, mashallah, it went very well, alhamdulillah, it was awesome, it was excellent, it was great. And then they ask them, who was worshiping and who was praying? And the narration mentions that Jibreel alayhi salam and those angels mention every single person who was worshiping on that night, they mention them by name and they brag about them to the angels. That so and so, the son of so and so, and such and such woman, this, the daughter of so and so, these people they were worshiping on that night and they talk about these people and they brag about these people and they praise these people to those angels. Then after they're done with this conversation with those angels, they ascend up into the first heaven. Again, the angels at the first heaven Heaven, they ask them, you're coming from the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, tell us how it went. And again they tell them, and then again they take the name and mention the name of every single person that was worshipping on the night of power and they brag about them. And they continue to do this level after level, sky after sky, as they continue to ascend through the heavens, they keep bragging about the people and mentioning the people by name who were worshipping on the night of power, until they finally reach that point of Sidratul Muntaha where they started from. One of the nearest places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the arsh of Allah, to the throne of Allah, and they reach that particular place, and again, they state before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah, they are delivering their report. Allah knows everything, Allah sees everything, Allah hears everything. But they are de delivering their report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in delivering their report, they say, O oh Allah, Ya Rabb, our master, we are coming back from the night of Laylatul Qadr and we found many of your slaves in worship, O oh Allah, and we found so and so, the son of so and so. We found such and such woman, the daughter of so and so. They mention each and every single person by name in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what exactly happens on the night of Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. That most definitely, without a doubt, we have sent it down. We, we revealed it, we sent it down, the Quran, in the night of Al Qadr, in the night of power. What could help you understand how remarkable and how amazing and how mind blowing the night of Al Qadr, the night of power, really is? And he says, Laylatul Qadri Khayrum min Alfi Shahr. The night of power, it is better than a thousand months. What does that exactly mean? And when you calculate a thousand months, basically it comes out to be a little more than 83 years. 
and there is a specific reason why it's okay to understand it exactly as a thousand months. One narration mentioned by Imam Malik in his Muwatta basically says that the Prophet ﷺ came to the Sahaba and he said, I was shown the ages of the people, the followers of the Prophets before me. And when I saw how long they used to live, they used to live for hundreds of years. The Prophet ﷺ said, I was very sad that the average age of my followers will be between 60 and 70. And so I felt bad that my Ummah will not be able to worship, my followers will not be able to worship like the the people that came before. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to console me has revealed this surah about the night of power that the reward of worshipping on the night of power is greater than a thousand months. And so the Prophet ﷺ comes to them and says, Allah is consoling you. Allah has revealed this surah in which he says that we have given you the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, and it is better than a thousand months, which is 80 plus years. So that is one meaning of it. The second meaning is in the Arabic language, there are certain expressions that are used in the Arabic language like there are in any language. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the reward of worshipping on the night of power is better than a thousand months, it means it's better better than worshipping for all of eternity. It is like worshipping for your entire life. Worshipping on that one night is more rewarding and is better. It is better than worshipping an entire lifetime. خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر the angels, they descend down waves upon waves upon waves. And we've talked about this. And Jibreel alayhi salam is at the head of them. Fiha in this remarkable night. Bi'idni rabbihim. By the permission of their Lord. Min kulli amr. Regarding each and every single issue. And this basically also means that they go around distributing. Salamun hiya. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is a night of peace. And this has three meanings. Number one, it means that it that night is peaceful. Number two, it means that night is safe. Allah protects you from shaitan and even any distractions on that night. And number three, it means that the angels go around saying salam to everyone who is worshiping and praying on that night. Hatta matla al fajr until the break of dawn arrives the next following morning, until the break of dawn comes. The next thing I wanted to share with you here is what the Prophet ﷺ has told us about the virtue of this particular night. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan while believing in Allah and hoping for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of the sins of that per person will be forgiven. And whoever worships on the night of power, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all the previous sins of that person. The Prophet sallallahu said, whosoever was deprived of worshipping Allah on this night, that person was deprived of everything. When is Laylatul Qadr? Now I'm not going to delve into too much detail, but suffice to say this, that there are a lot of different opinions. I'll just give you a brief rundown. Some of them, such as Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, is on the 21st night of the month of Ramadan. Some other companions of the Prophet وسلم, such as uh, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they said that the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, is the 23rd night of the month of Ramadan, and again, this is based off of their observations. Some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum said that it was the 25th night, uh, based off of similar narrations about the Quran coming down. Then there's a large group of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, including Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who mentions a narration from the Prophet وسلم, an authentic narration, in which it is said that the 27th night, and that's specifically based off of the fact that the Prophet وسلم, said there is a little bit of light rain on the night of Laylatul Qadr, and Ubay ibn Ka'b says, I went into the masjid and I saw a little bit of wa water trickling down through the roof of the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and when the Prophet وسلم, got up from his prayer, some of his clothes and even on his forehead there was a little bit of moisture and a little bit of the dirt from because of the moisture had clung to his forehead and that was the 27th night and based off of that I was able to identify that the 27th night in fact 
is Laylatul Qadr and there are even some narrations that the 29th night because one time the Prophet ﷺ commented that the night that remains is Laylatul Qadr and another weaker narration says the Prophet ﷺ said the last night of Ramadan is Laylatul Qadr referring to the 29th night in that particular year. So there are all these different opinions. When exactly is Laylatul Qadr? So that's the question. The next narration that you find is that the Prophet ﷺ says that it is one of the odd numbered nights from uh, the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. But yet there is another narration of the Prophet ﷺ where the, that is found in both Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ says seek out the night of power Laylatul Qadr during the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan and he did not specify the odd numbered nights. So basically what we come to understand and realize is if somebody's willing to take a chance they could take a chance on any one of those odd numbered nights. But if somebody was not willing to take a chance on achieving such an unbelievable, amazing, remarkable reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then somebody would worship all 10 last nights of the month of Ramadan. And in fact, based off of all of this, uh, some of the scholars and the tabi'un, based on their observations of different years, their conclusion, and it may actually makes a lot of sense logically as well, their conclusion was that Laylatul Qadr could be any one of the last 10 nights, and the reason why they witnessed it on different nights, uh, different years, was because it changes nights from year to year. And so that's kind of an understanding of when is Laylatul Qadr? So I really didn't answer the question yet, when is Laylatul Qadr? So let me share a hadith with you which answers that question. The Prophet ﷺ came out of his home and he came into the masjid and there were two people that were arguing with each other. Like they were calling each other names. And then the Prophet ﷺ paused for a second and everyone kind of noticed the look on the Prophet ﷺ's face. He was just kind of pausing, thinking deeply. And they said, O Messenger of God, what's going on? And the Prophet ﷺ said that I was given the knowledge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of when exactly is Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. And I came out to tell y'all, and there were two people that were arguing. And because of their argument, I was made to forget when is the night of Qadr, when is the night of power. I was made to forget that. The Prophet ﷺ said that seek it and find it in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is what's better for you. So to answer the question, bottom line, when is Laylatul Qadr? We don't know. It could be any one of the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet ﷺ said that is better for us. This leads to a very, very reasonable question. What is the benefit in not telling us when, is, when exactly is Laylatul Qadr? When is the night of power? Imam Razi ta'ala in his tafsir, he actually mentioned something very interesting. He says anything that is valuable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never disclosed its exact, precise knowledge and location or time to us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always made us look for it. And He gives a few examples. He said, for instance, which of our actions will earn us the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't know. Just do good deeds. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about the fact that sins can earn us the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But which sin will finally bring the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't know. So that just means I stay away from all sins as much as possible, as much as I can. Again, like when exactly are du'as accepted? The Prophet ﷺ told us there is a time on the day of Friday when prayers or du'as are accepted. What is that exact hour, when exactly is that time, we don't know. So that we spend the whole day of Friday making dua as much as possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, when death comes, you won't get a second more or a second less. But when will death come? Nobody knows. So that you live every moment that like it's your last. So what we basically understand, what we realize is anything that is of significance and value, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us work for it a little bit. The reward corresponds to the effort that is put into a deed. And so the harder we work, 
the greater the reward will be. The last thing, and again, I don't want to mention too much technical details here, but the Prophet ﷺ actually does talk to us about what are some of the signs of Laylatul Qadr. A few things the Prophet ﷺ mentions. Number one, he says that the nights will be very serene and very calm. There will almost be like a strange serenity and calmness about the night. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ says it won't be hot nor will it be freezing, frigid, cold on that night. The third thing the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, some narrations mentioned, that there will be some light drizzle or some moisture on that night. Number four, the Prophet ﷺ mentions about the morning after, that the sun will not have sharp rays shooting out of it, but it will just have this very soft haze and glow about it the following morning. So these are some of the signs of Laylatul Qadr. Now, I wanted to talk about what exactly are we supposed to do on the night of Laylatul Qadr. So, starting at the very bare minimum, what can we do? To hopefully, inshallah, get the reward of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Number one, the bare minimum, is praying the Isha prayer in congregation, in the masjid on that night. That's the bare minimum. Number two, now pray Fajr every single morning for the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan in the masjid, in the congregation, in the jama'ah. That's it. Level three is you have a little bit of qiyam. You have some extra worship during the night. Taraweeh is a great opportunity for that. Level four. Then I'm gonna worship a little bit extra during the night. You can recite Qur'an, you can pray nawafil, like pray extra salah, offer extra prayers, units of prayer, or make dua. The thing I'd specifically like to recommend is making dua. And then there's level five. Not only are you praying Isha and Taraweeh and making extra dua and praying Fajr in the masjid, level five is called I'tikaf. I'tikaf means that you take out the whole 10 days and nights of the month of Ramadan and you basically say, I'm gonna go stay in the masjid and I'm not gonna leave the masjid for 10 days straight. That is the sunnah of the Prophet When you just dedicate your entire time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last thing I'm gonna mention here and I'm going to conclude with this insha'Allah, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha asks the Prophet She says that, O oh, Messenger of God, if I am able to worship Allah on the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, what do you recommend I do on that night? And the Prophet ﷺ taught her the following dua. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. There are three parts. The first part, Allahumma, Allahumma means, Oh Allah, innaka, most definitely you are, without a shred of a doubt, you are afuun. Al-afu in the Arabic language means to look away, to turn away, to ignore, to let something go. One who excuses. One who gives you chance after chance after chance after chance. Who lets go, disregards, forgives everything wrong that we have done. To hibbul afwa. You love letting our sins go. You love overlooking our sins. You love giving us another opportunity, another chance. Fa'fu anni. I beg you, I plead with you. I ask you, Ya Allah, please give me another chance. Wipe away my sins. That's what this dua means. And that's the dua, that's the supplication to be made on all these last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Again, this is Abdul Nasir Jenga. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.